Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a, an Indian green tea, which is interesting. Uh, it's just when you think that you are familiar with the teas or you become familiar with the teas of a country, uh, you find that uh, they, those, those, those teas change. Uh, one location, one place draws inspira inspiration from another tea location and they begin to experiment and create new teas, modify their existing teas, and so the teas that you knew have become, or you go beyond the teas that you knew into, into others. So it's, a, it's an ever-changing process. I scooped that enough here to cover the bottom surface of my tasting cup, which is often used in a lot of your uh, Indian tea plantation type setups to compare, uh, to cut multiple teas and, and for to see which teas, how they're going to be graded and selected and uh, placed on the market or purchased by visitors to the to those estates. So I put in enough water so it's going to rest above the just below the opening there of my tasting cup. Lid with the hole. I want that hole back towards the handle so that when I tip this over, air will be able to flow through what becomes the upper half of the, the cup here and pours out the lower half. So let that sit and steep and introduce this tea. This is from Lochan Tea Company. This is their Doke Diamond Green Second Flush. Again, Doke, I reviewed another tea from Doke recently. Doke is in the Bihar region, which is an agricultural area, but not one that's been known for tea, uh, for especially for quite a long while, if at all. Uh, 50 grams available for $8. Uh, Lochan, Rajiv Lochan, the Lochan tea developed this tea estate where people said this is a terrible place for tea. So far they're, they're proving them wrong. Uh, I'm going to talk about this tea as far as the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. Starting off here with some of the dry leaf characteristics. First thing, and, pro and it, it's a fairly rich and uh, dominant aroma. Uh, there are certain green teas from China. I get, I, you know, you can't always be precise, but some of those green teas uh, in, in areas seem to have be developed from tea varieties that were originally intended to be black teas. So they took this, this black tea variety use that plant to create some green tea. And when that happens you get this choc you can get this chocolatey cocoa powder. And that, that tea variety is those kind of characteristics I find very often associated with like a keman type of tea variety. You get a cocoa powder, you get a chocolatey type note, and that's what I'm getting here, a, a chocolate cocoa powder kind of, of a note. So it's a it's a sweet chocolatey type of no, so I'm going to scoop out a few of these leaves here. Um, these leaves, if you were to call them green, they would be on the uh, extremely dark green gray end of the spectrum. So it's not a very, it's not going to be something that you, if you're expecting a kind of a, vi a, a bright, vibrant uh, green, blue, green, yellow type of color, that is not to be found here. Um, I'm getting a variety of sizes. This particular looks like a leaf, uh, a young leaf connected to, uh, hard to tell, looks, it looks like it was connected to a bud, uh, very close to the bud there. Uh, so it, was, it could have been multiple leaves on that one, and that particular leaf was uh, about an inch. Others that, I'm, that I pull out here, here's one that is about an inch in length. Looks like it's kind of been folded over, so it may be a little bit longer after it's steeped and loosened up. Uh, individual leaf, mostly wrapped along, twisted and wrapped along the length of the, of the leaf there. That one's maybe two inches or so in length. Others, leaves, again, crinkled, twisted along the length. Uh, probably another inch or so for that one. So a variety, uh, some variation in size. Most of them neighboring in the area of an inch to an inch and a half in length. Most of them look to be individual leaves. Uh, very 
So you're getting more mature leaves. Uh, I don't see a lot of uh, bud sets or individual needles, buds rather, in this, in this spoonful. So setting that to the side and get into the uh, wet leaf to get, and pouring the liquor here. So here's your standard tasting cup, sans uh, pitcher here, and you would just simply set it over like that. Let that rest, and you could do that down a row, say if you had a multiple ta tasting cups and you're trying to sit through and taste several of these and make purchase decisions or, or s grading decisions quickly. Shake out those last few drops, set that to the side for a moment, and get into the wet leaf here, starting off with the aroma. Beany note. I got a kind of a lima bean type of aroma. A um, bit of sweetness there. Still some of the uh, uh, cream spinach coming out. A bit of a, a milky. I, I something says milk chocolate, but that's not quite the right word. Cream spinach, maybe the creamy texture of a white chocolate, that kind of aroma coming out to a, a slight degree. Let me pull out, actually, let me show how these leaves can be evaluated if you had a multiple, several sets uh, in, a t in tasting sets like this. Turn it upside down, give it a shake, a lot of those leaves are going to fall. In this case, most of the leaves fell to rest on top of the lid here. I'm going to kind of push those into the center and pick up a few. Here is a leaf uh, pear. Uh, looks like... Uh, I'm looking... Uh, no, I can't really say if, if there was a bud there. Probably was a bud there. Uh, these leaves not fully unfurled, so they're, they're fairly, they're fairly tightly, tightly wrapped or twisted. Uh, meaning that subsequent steeps are going to have some taste to them. Delicate leaves that tore that one quite easily, actually. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Another individual leaf here. Um, two or three inches in length. Gently drawing this one open. A thick vein in the middle of this leaf. Ten pricks of oxidation here and there. One or two spots actually on this particular leaf. There, uh, colors have brightened up. You get more of a, uh, a olive green there, olive drab kind of color. Another one that hasn't fully uh, unfurled yet. Um, so, uh, kind of a little bit of. Here and there, um, I don't see a lot of oxidation, which is a good sign that these leaves got treated uh, properly, processed quickly, so that uh, oxidation didn't start to develop, take place on these. Uh, although this one's got a little bit more of a rust tinge to it as I kind of tease it open. So I'm going to set that to the side, get more into the liquor, and to do that, of course, I'm going to have to move from what is the regular cupping set into my pitcher here. Give that a swirl. Hold that up to the light. And it's, it is beyond the, uh, say, the Chinese green type of colors of a, of a yellow. This one's getting more of a, of a reddish tinge to it. Some of the beanie note coming out a little bit more. With a sweet bean coming out there. Set that to the side. Nice color in the cup, still a bit more of a reddish tinge. A stringent, a brisk punch to it.
starchy uh, corn, yeah, yellow corn, corn kernels there. Uh, yeah, the mouthfeel is dominated by the starchy, the astringency here. Um, tastes, uh, aromas, and tastes a little bit, a bit more subdued here. Corn starchiness, a, a sourness that picks up in the back as well. Uh, a, a bitter, sour kind of aspect to it. The beanie note, the uh, lima bean kind of aspect, more in the in the front is in the initial sips. Is it? Travel, initially travels, enters your mouth there. Beanie notes present as you kind of swirl around as well. So, this tea, um, this is not, this is not what you, if you are used to Chinese greens and the styles associated with Chinese greens, this one has what in with, with Chinese greens is often considered less desirable characteristics. It's got more uh, starchiness to it. It's got more astringency to it. It's got that uh, sour slash bitter aspect that hits more towards the back. It's got a heavier beanie type note in the aromas. Uh, so overall, this one is is if you're used, like I said, if you're used to. Chinese greens, this one has the, often was considered, yeah, those less desirable components. Um, although it smelled, it, it did smell quite nice in the dry leaf form. Um, that, that, that chocolatey type component didn't really carry through into the, the cup there. So I would probably give this tea, oh, this is tough. I probably have to give this tea an 86. Um, this is, an, I would have to classify this more as kind of an, an acquired taste, something that you, uh, you, you like some of those uh, more, those bolder, more pronounced components uh, in other green teas. So come back to Walker Tea Review. If you're particular about a, a kind of tea that really just, that really stands out, that really attracts you, You'll find that at Walker Tea Review. You can sign up for the newsletter to get tea reviews delivered directly into your inbox. You can sign up for member content. To talk to, get interviews with people like uh, the Lochans. Uh, to find out more about tea, different tea locations as well.